Hi guys and welcome to the channel. My name is Katie. Today I'm going to be showing you how to frame in an unfinished basement bathroom. I need to frame in this exterior wall and this exterior wall. And then I'm also going to have one interior wall right here. And this wall is obviously already here. The first thing I'm going to do is measure out from my exterior wall four inches and mark that. Then I'm going to go to the other side of the wall and do the same thing and then I'm going to connect those two marks with a straight line. As you can see, I already did this without you. I apologize. The easiest way to connect these two lines is to snap a chalk line if you have a friend to hold the other end. Otherwise, you can use a level or you can use a 2 by 4 that is very straight. They are not all that way. The reason you come out four inches at the bottom of the wall rather than three and a half, which is the thickness of the framing that we're working with, is to allow for your concrete foundation wall being out of plumb. Right here, for example, my level is touching at the top and is about three eighths of an inch away from the wall at the bottom. So in a span of about six feet, this wall is about three eighths of an inch out of plumb. So by the time I got up to closer to nine feet, I'm a lot closer to a half inch than I'm needing to correct. So leaving that space down at the bottom just allows you to correct the plumbness of your wall. And it also gets you away from needing to deal with any waviness in the wall. Next, I marked another straight line four inches out from my other exterior wall. The scribbly part is where I need to chip out some concrete to move my drain pipe, so I'm not going to be framing over top of that today. Once I had my exterior walls laid out, I measured for and cut my 2x4 pressure treated lumber to fit. You always want to use pressure treated lumber, also called green treat, anytime you're attaching lumber directly to concrete. Although treated lumber is not completely waterproof, it is adequately protected against the amounts of water that concrete can contain and absorb. Untreated lumber in direct contact with concrete will rot over time. Once all of my bottom plates were cut, I used a regular drill bit to pre-drill where I wanted all of my concrete anchors to be. Spaced approximately two feet apart and about three inches in from either end. Next, holding the plates to my straight line on the ground, I used a masonry bit in my hammer drill to pre-drill the concrete for the concrete anchors. Once my anchors were all ready to go, I swept the loose concrete dust out of the way, applied a generous amount of PL400 adhesive to the bottom of the plates, and installed the plates with three inch concrete anchors. Now that the bottom plates for my exterior walls are all set, I'm ready to install the bottom plate for this interior wall. Holding my tape measure to the parallel wall's bottom plate, I'm going to mark the same distance near each perpendicular wall to where I want my interior wall to be. Then using a chalk line or a straight edge, I'll connect my marks again. I decided to do the door layout and framing as a separate shorter video so that I could really dive into all the whys and hows of framing a door rough opening. So feel free to click that video link here or I'll also have that video as well as the one about how to correctly frame your tub surround linked down in my description box. But basically I figured out where my door opening was going to be and I installed the bottom plates for that wall. Now that all of my bottom plates are in place, my next step is to cut all of my top plates to size. For both of my walls going this way, I'm going to butt my tape measure up to this existing wall, and I'm going to measure to the far side of this bottom plate that I just put down. And then for this wall, I'm just going to measure between these two bottom plates. I'll cut those to size. So now that my top plates are cut and ready to go, I'm going to go ahead and lay out my walls on my bottom plates and then copy that layout onto the top plates before I put the top plates in place. I'm going to start on this back wall because there won't be anything special with the layout. I'm going to lay my studs out 16 inches on center. 16 or 24 inches on center is standard. On center means to the center of your stud. So that means if somebody butts their tape measure up against this wall and comes 16 inches this way, they should find the center of your stud. So that means because a stud is an inch and a half thick, you actually need to come three quarter inches back. So 15 and a quarter for our first one, and then make an X to the side where your stud is going to go. And then I'll put a little X here, just to remind myself that I need a stud over on this side. So a 16 inch on center layout is all of your red highlighted numbers on your tape measure. So my next number is 32 inches. I'm gonna come back three quarters of an inch, which is here, and put my X over there. So I'm just gonna work my way down the rest of the wall, marking out three quarter inches back from my red numbers. When I get to this far corner of my wall, I'm just going to make a mark where the two plates run into each other 
and put an X on this side of that mark to remind myself to put a stud right there for drywall backing. There are no rules about which direction you're supposed to pull your layout from. So whether I butt my tape measure to this wall or this one to get my layout for this wall, doesn't matter. But sometimes it is helpful, especially on small walls that won't take much time, to take a look and make sure that your layout isn't going to interfere with any of your other fixtures that are going to be in your wall. In this specific case, if I pull my layout from this wall, my very first 16 inch on center stud would be exactly where our drain pipe is going to go. Even if I decided to move just that stud to one side or the other, I would be risking myself or someone else forgetting about it and putting some trim nail or something right into the drain pipe because we forgot that it was right on our layout. So in this case, it's simple enough just to pull my layout from the other direction so that my studs lay out exactly on either side of where the drain pipe is gonna go. For this last wall, I'm going to mark an X at the very end like you do with all walls, and then pull my layout 16 inches on center, and I'm gonna mark out for my door. An inch and a half for the trimmer, and then another inch and a half, so at three inches for the king stud. And same thing here, we'll mark it out for the heck of it. So this last X in my layout is actually going to be too close to my trimmer and my king stud to put it exactly where I marked it out, which is not a problem at all. We'll just put it on the direct far side of the king stud. Once I have everything laid out, I'm going to take my speed square and mark all of my lines straight across my base plate so that I have a nice straight line to follow when I'm installing my studs. Then I'm going to take my top plate and lay it right next to my base plate. And using the speed square, I'm going to transfer all of my markings straight across. For just this wall, I'm going to need to make some extra markings in my top plate because I need to continue my layout across the top of my door where I don't have it here on my base plate. So I'm going to hold my tape measure to my last mark on layout. And then because I have it held exactly to the line, I'm going to mark exactly on the red number rather than holding it back three quarter of an inch and carry that layout across my doorway. I'll square those up. And then do the exact same for my other two walls. Now that I have all of my bottom and top plates laid out, I'm ready to install my top plates on the ceiling. When it comes to installing top plates in a basement, you need them to be plumb in all directions, meaning that I need my top plate to be completely plumb up from my bottom plate this way, as well as this way. I've already checked and this wall is completely plumb, which is awesome. So that means that I can hold this top plate right against that wall and not have to worry about plumbing my wall this way. If you do not have an existing perfectly plumb wall to hold your top plate against, you'll need to plumb a line up from one of the far ends of your bottom plate. And then when you go to install your top plate, you'll hold the far end of your top plate to that mark, in addition to this next step. Now I'm going to plumb up from either end of my bottom plate so that I know that my wall is plumb this way. To plumb something this tall, you can probably use a plate level, which if you have one of those, you're probably not getting a whole lot of use out of this video. Or you can take a regular six foot level and a very straight piece of framing. Holding my two by four to the front of my base plate, I'm going to hold my level to the side of my two by four get it plumb, and then mark out on one of these floor joists on the same side of the two by it that's touching my bottom plate. As soon as I make that line, I'm going to make an X on the side of the line that I need my top plate to go on, just so I don't get confused later. And then I'm just going to do the same thing on the other side. Now that I am working with a wood surface, it's okay that I don't have any friends. I'm going to use a nail to attach the metal tab on the end of my chalk line to one of my marks. Then holding my chalk line on my other mark, I'm going to snap a line. Next, I'm going to screw my top plate into place, making sure that my layout is facing down and mirroring the layout on the bottom plate. If you also have no friends, it's easiest to begin attaching your top plate at the middle and then work your way out to either end. Making sure to put two screws in each joist and holding the front of the top plate to the straight line. For my next top plate, I needed to install several pieces of backing between the ceiling joists. Two reasons. First of all, the front of this top plate falls in the gap between two ceiling joists. So I will mark out the straight line for the front of my plate across these pieces and I will also attach the front of my plate to these pieces. 
Secondly, because the top of this wall falls between two ceiling joists, I need to add drywall backing here for the ceiling drywall to attach to. Because of that second reason, I needed to make sure that these backing pieces were no further apart than two foot on center. After that, I installed this top plate exactly like the last one, holding the end of it to the top plate I just installed to plumb it from front to back, and following my chalk line on the ceiling to plumb it from side to side. Once all of my plates were in place, I was finally ready to fill in the studs. This is the easy part, people. Just measure from the top of your bottom plate to the bottom of your top plate, everywhere there's an X, and cut a stud to that length. In a basement, you're working between a pre-existing floor and ceiling, so you actually need to measure the length for every single one of your studs. Because the distance between your plates is different from wall to wall, and even from stud to stud. Basically, every part of basement framing takes four times longer than regular framing. But it's not structural, so it's really not a big deal if you do it wrong. So there is that. To install the wall studs, you want two screws attaching it at the top to the top plate and two screws at the bottom attaching it to the bottom plate. I keep saying screws because that's what I'm using. It is actually more standard to install top plates and studs with nails, but I do not have a framing nail gun. For a room this size, I probably wouldn't worry about it, but if you're considering framing an entire basement, I would absolutely recommend borrowing or renting a framing nailer. So now that all of my layout studs are in place, I'm ready to frame in my doorway. I decided to go into a little more detail in a separate video, but here's the cliff notes. Install the king studs. Install the trimmers. Install the header. Install the cripple box. Okay guys, now that all the framing framing is done, except for a couple of studs we'll have to put in once we get the drain pipe moved, all I have left to do is go around and check for drywall vacuum. And frame for the tub surround, but again, separate video. Drywall backing is framing that you put in place that isn't a structural part of your wall or ceiling, but is there for the drywall to attach itself to. Whenever you are finished framing, you want to go around and basically look at all of the inside corners of your walls and where your wall meets your ceiling. And actually the only spot we needed it inside the bathroom was above that top plate where we already put it, so I'm going to show you what I'm talking about on the other side of the bathroom wall. So because of the way the new wall met the existing wall, when drywall is attached to the existing wall, there is nothing along the very edge of where the drywall will be for the drywall to attach to. So you take your scrap pieces that you've been creating as you've been framing and you use those as your drywall backing. In this case, there's a stud directly behind the new wall that I'm able to screw the backing into from the side. And now the edge of my drywall has something to attach to. Ta-da! If you have any questions, please feel free to ask them in the comments down below and I will do my best to answer them. If you like the video, please hit the like button. If you want to see more like this, hit the subscribe button. And thank you for watching. Bye!